And uh, we have different celebrations today, about three. Oh, please forgive me, those three of you that I've not been able to pray for. But I pray that God Almighty will answer your prayers in Jesus' mighty name. I will see John hands with you to pray. Just because she celebrating a, I mean, a, a very important birthday. And that is a I mean, landmark birthday today. That's why we just decided to make that one more, more pronounced than others. So you'll be 52 in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Better say better, amen. amen. Those of you that are not 50 now, say better, amen. amen. Yeah, I realize that some people don't want to be part of the elders. Whether you like it or not, you are growing. And one day we will celebrate your 50th birthday yeah. in the name of Jesus. Whether you want to join the elders team or you don't want to join them, you will still be there. I try as much as I to avoid it. A day came when I just have to celebrate and they start calling me elder. And I look at myself, I say, really? And uh, before we know it, gray hair start coming up. Well, it's, it's beautiful. So we give God all the praise. Father, we bless your name, Lord. We thank you this morning. We say, unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he hath done. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he hath done. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things he Great things he hath done. Greater things he will do unto the Lord. Be the, the glory, great things he has done. Unto the Lord, be, be the, the glory, great things he has done. Amen. Father, we give you all the praise. Thank you, Father, for another moment like this in your presence. You are brought here for a purpose. We pray, Lord, by reason of the word that we come for this morning, Father, you will speak to every heart in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray we will not run right out of your word. By the time the word begins to come, Father God Almighty, it, it, the word will realign, yes, our life with that of yours in the mighty name of Jesus. And after today, yes, there shall be a new a sharp turn around in our lives in the name of Jesus. Let life be transformed in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Speak through me, O God. I jack my folk accord and speak through me. Yes, even to your children, even including myself, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be the name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've wanted to prepare a message on a birthday before, but I realized that it's not every one of what I'm celebrating today. Well, nevertheless, it is very important because the Bible even makes us understand that we should, we should always remember our days to celebrate. And, um, but we look at a crucial world today, but it's going to be in a, in a question form. But the truth of the matter is you may not be able to answer the question openly, but you know within yourself you can answer the question inwardly. And the truth of the matter is after that, it is important for you to go through it and to make necessary adjustments, if necessary, necessary amendments, where it is very important. And I pray that God will speak to us expressly in the name of Jesus. The truth of the matter is most of the time, we normally bombard heaven with prayers, including myself. So when I'm saying you, I'm talking to myself as well. Just that it is the right word when we are talking to the general, pub, to, to, the general uh, to people. We almost, always bombard heaven with so many prayers, so many requests. God do this for me. God do this for me. God do this for me. I want it now. I want it now. And most of the time, heaven may tarry to answer that prayer. But sometimes, God will just want to give you, a, want to answer that prayer quickly just to test your sincerity and to see how you are going to manage it, that kind of request. Remember, Joseph, before Joseph was, was glorified, he passed through a lot. God taught him a lot of things. 
and how to become a leader. He trusted him in so many things. But thank God, throughout the entire scripture, we did not see where Joseph failed. And I can imagine looking at that script, looking at the life of Joseph, he got to a particular point and I was asking myself, what would have happened? I don't trust myself really. If I found myself from the priest um, from the from the pit, from the pit, and I was and um, I found myself being sold to another country. And I found favor with the wife of my boss. And then I said, lie with me so that I can, you can get promotion. I don't trust myself. I don't know what could have happened. Many of us, we sit down there, we begin to judge. We say, ah, ah, I won't do that. I won't do that. But can God trust you when they get to that particular point? Because there are so many reasons why this man ordinarily is supposed to sleep with the, wife, with the woman. I mean, sorry, with the, with the wife of his boss, boss and get promoted and get set to probably become ADC or PA. And, uh, you know, but can God trust you? God took Joseph past through that means. He did not fear God. And in fact, when he got to the to the apex of that leadership in that country as the prime minister, I mean, prime minister, those who were offended came. The children, I mean, the, um, the brothers, they came to the land. I can't trust myself, what I would do? If it happened to be me, those who want to kill my dream at infancy, those who sold me, those who, everything, and they came, into my hand just like that. I don't know what I will do. I cannot trust myself. I know you are very spiritual. You can handle it that way. You can say, hey, you sold me, Abby. God bless you. I think I want to show my power. I, want to, I don't want to let them know that I have the power. I have what it takes to deal with them. Can you see? God put this man through different tests. And he did not fail. The question to you this morning is, can God trust you? Can God trust you? Do you know that nobody will have seen um, Joseph, I mean Jacob, or is it, sorry, sorry, pardon me. Nobody will have seen Joseph if he committed that act that very day. But what did he say? Against who? God. No matter whatever we are doing in the secret, God knows about it. You can hide from pastor. You can hide from Dick Imbola as your prayer coordinator so that you don't know that I'm doing this. But the eyes of the Lord is everywhere. A whoop, you see, um, a man, a lady... A man, you know, that happened to be in the position of trust as the chairman of a company was doing a kind of recruitment. And a lady came. He saw that the lady was very beautiful. And the lady happened to be a Christian. And she asked for her hand. I mean, and she asked for relationship. I mean, he asked for relationship. The lady told him that the only thing that will do this is if God will not be where we will be, we will be doing it. So they went to the hotel. She said she will agree. For eventual, oh, sorry, I, I, okay. Well, they went to the hotel, and he asked the man, shut the door very well. May I ask you if God will not see us? He said, God will not see us. God will not see us here. But the truth of the matter is, the man couldn't just do it for that single statement. The eyes of God can see, and even in the dark, even if you hide under the, under, under, the, under the earth, the Lord can still see. So what we are saying in essence is that can God trust you with so many things that you are bombarding heaven for? Many of us, it is very easy to receive that request from God. But it's another thing to maintain it. In the course of maintaining it, that is where the question comes. Can God trust you? 
Can God trust you? Can God trust you with time? Every one of us, God has given us time. On the surface of the earth, and the, the, the truth of the matter is, is just very free. But can God trust you with it? What are you doing with your time? Many of us, like I normally say, we can watch film. We can watch three hours, um, three hours times, times four film. Part one, part two, part three, part four. Four times three. Twelve hours on the, at, at a go. Not doing anything profitable. Nothing meaningful. Nothing contribute to your life. Nothing contribute to the life of anybody. And as we are watching, those ones have made their money. And we begin to laugh. We begin to look at all this stuff. Can God trust you? God has given us this time. Praise the Lord. Can God trust you with time? That's the question. And I said earlier on that it's a question that you need to answer yourself. I will not put you on the spot to answer that question. Even myself, I cannot answer that question openly. What are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your time? Can God trust you with that time? So people say time is money. Most of the time, you are in your place of work, you while away time. You wasting people, you wasting people, you wasting you will be wasting people's resources. Thinking you are, you know, trying to, you know, buy, I mean, buy time so that you can just finish on time. The truth of the matter is God has placed you in that place of work. How are you handling the time? You are expected to spend eight hours there. But if you calculate it yourself, can you adequately, can you conveniently say you actually spend that eight hours for that company? How many times do you go to the toilet? As a Christian, all this thing is being recorded. A day will come when we will give account of our time. We will give account of it. Praise the Lord. So time is wasted as spending too much of it on something that should have taken less of it. Some of us can oversleep. We can overeat. We can overdress. Coming to church, some people will deliberately late. In the process of doing uh, makeup, concealable, concealer, you conceal everything. But the truth of the matter, you are still old. Whether you conceal it or you don't conceal it. If only you come to the realization that no matter how you conceal it and how you foundation or whatever you do, just to look nice, all it takes for you to just wash that thing off and we see read you. So because of that, you waste time coming to church. All this thing is being recorded. The wasted time of your life will soon become hours. The hours will become days. The wasted days will soon become weeks. The wasted weeks will soon become months. Which will become the wasted years of your life. If only we take account of it. You will give account of your time to God. That's just the truth of the matter. The long hours you use to watch Netflix, television. I'm not saying you should not watch TV. I watch. I don't, in fact, I don't really have television. I mean, we have TV, but we hardly put it on. But I watch sometimes Netflix. Probably maybe my daughter is saying, hey, this is the new release. And in the process of watching it, I just sleep. I just normally go off. That's my sleeping tablet. The endless, the endless period of chatting. What are you chatting? You're all through your discussion, you just chat about nonsense. Nothing spiritual. As a child of God, if you're a Christian, you've got to be spiritual. I normally say that. So every aspect of your life that is not dedicated, God always needs 10% 10, 10 of your time. But throughout the day, can you conveniently sit down to say, this is what I've done for the Lord. This is my 10%. This is my tithe for the Lord. Stealing time in the office is like stealing money, if you don't know. 
Because people say time is money. So you can come to church and say, I don't steal, but you are stealing indirectly. We all say that yeah, time is money. I've always caught it. But you still time in your place of work. You get to work. There's always a problem in my place of work when I was, uh, when I, when I was in Nigeria. Because it's the government staff, you can walk in. You can walk in the 11 o'clock. You run 7.30. So they always rush. Ha. Mr. Shofolu, don't let that man come before you because he will write the exact time. So if I put 10 o'clock there, there's no way you can put 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock. And they will come to my office, they will just ease at me. <laughs> and I will just be laughing. So they know that. So once they are going, they say, let me just sign first. Please, please, let me just sign. Before you sign. If only we realize that whatever we are doing, God has put us in that place to check, I mean, to if he can trust us with it. Accepting time, accepting money for the time you did not, you did nothing, he's stealing. I remember where I was working before, so what normally happens is that there are times that it's so quiet, and the HOD, so I mean, the, our HOD then would just say, well, you can relax, but when the boss is coming, just try to just be doing something. You understand? And when the boss is coming, really, just see us going up and down, doing no, nothing. I'm not doing anything. We will put this one, we put on top, we bring this one, we bring this one. We are not doing anything just because boss is around. Talk less of, we cannot just do that when God is very much around. So whatever we are doing, we just think that what is the value of God concerning my attitude here? Praise the Lord. So that is why I say, I realized later that we say we don't steal really, but we are stealing time. That's part of stealing. One day, we will stand before the judgment seat of the almighty God to give account of our life. We cannot just be too smart for God. Everyone shall be rewarded according to his or her works. That's what the Bible makes us to understand. So God is expected to depend on you in your place of work. He has given you that job for a purpose to effect certain changes there. If others are stealing, you cannot do the same. So if others, others may, but you cannot. That should be your watchword. If they are wasting time, killing and stealing it, you cannot do like them. Where I was working, that's a temptation because we determine the, the approval of some, uh, some institution then in Nigeria. And sometimes on my table, I just find brown envelope. I will go to my HOD, say, I saw, he said, that's yours. What do we do? He said, don't worry about that. It's taken care of. <laughs> I was not a school teacher. <laughs> but I said, well, well, I begin to console myself. I didn't do anything. They just give me the money. I'll just pick it. <laughs> well, there's no sin in that one because I don't know the source. <laughs> and I asked my boss, where's the money from? Say, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. You know, later, I now realize that they, were, they will have been giving us that envelopes for maybe, maybe about two or three weeks regularly like that. Then the next thing is uh, um, we are visiting a particular school to inspect and all that. And those schools are the ones that give us those money that you don't even know. So whether you like it or not, it's, an, it's automatic approval. It's, in fact, most of the time when I get there, I just say all my rubbish and everything. The man will tell the maybe proprietor or proprietress, don't worry, we will set to everything. I will, they will have to rewrite my own story. <laughs> and everything will just go like that. I can't leave the job because I don't have another job. But that's how it was. So we came to realize that uh, all these things are bribe. And I stopped taking it. And they share my bribe. Before my present, show for you, you don't want to be. Show you eat Amala. <laughs> Compensate me with that. It's after you eat it, that money that you didn't collect, that's part of it that we use here. 
Praise the Lord. So there are so many jobs that are so tempting. You don't have to take the bride indirectly. I mean directly. But it comes to you whether you like it or not. Sometimes they can offer you land to say uh, pay it with cooperative. That cooperative will not even pay it. They say, the, don't worry, it's being paid for. A lot of things happen that put the children of God on that acidic test before God. That by the time, without doing anything, one will just naturally walk to hell without knowing about it. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. So the question is, can God trust you? With the use of time, even in your school, office, and that, act, and that engagement that absorbs your life. So God is actually looking for who to trust. I, time, I mean, God gets disappointed when we fail him. That's the of the, just, uh, you get disappointed when somebody you trust so much disappoints you. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So if God searches through the hidden aspect of our life, the way we use our time, what do you think? Where do you think we will spend eternity? That is the question. The Bible makes us understand in the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. I cannot have time to be. Can it be projected? Exodus chapter 3, verse 1. Say there's time for everything. There's time for everything. Time to kill, time to war, time to so many things. There's always time. So it is wrong for you to say you don't have that time. So there's always time. Time for us to even go to school. There's a time to start learning. There's a time to acquire special skills and experiences. You don't have to rest when you're supposed to be at the battlefront. You don't kill at the time of peace. Many are guilty before God in the use of our time. Remember David, King David. I will just make a simple example of that one. God gave him time. He did not use his time effectively. And that one we almost landed him in hell. Thank God for the mercy of God upon his life. So when David sinned with Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, the, the, you know, when he sinned against, uh, when he sinned against, the Bible makes us understand that that was the time he was supposed to be where at the war front. But you, this man did not go to the war. This, the the devil hijacked that time, and gave him another job to do. As he was just watching from the balcony, he saw um, he saw Uriah's wife bathing, and the king slept. I mean, he sent for, for her, and she, he slept with her, committing gravest error of the entire of his life because the divine judgment that followed kept resounding as never to end in the life of David simply because he did not manage the time. God will help us in the name of Jesus. It was a wrong time for him. He was supposed to be at the forefront to war. He was supposed to be at a place where he would be giving instruction on how to go and how to, you know, battle with the enemy. But he did not use that time. And because of that, the Bible makes us that he was, I, I cannot even imagine how can a king be, strolling, be going on, on, on the roof. That's how the Bible puts it. The Bible says, you, let me just think. Second Samuel chapter 11. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle. So that you don't say, Pastor, don't quote any scripture. Second Samuel chapter 11. 1 to 11, and it came, because we don't have the time, I have reference for all these things that I'm saying. And it came to pass, after the years was expired, at the time when king go forth to battle, the king sent Joab and his servant with him, and all Israel, and they destroyed the throne of Am, uh, Am, Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem, and it came to pass in the, in the evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walk upon the roof and walk upon the roof of the king's house. What's the king doing that? The Bible did not say on the chamber 
on the balcony, on the roof. So if you are <laughs> if you are not in the right place, we do the wrong thing. He was tired and he, he wasn't comfortable because the time was supposed to be. At the time, he was using that time to just walk about and he went on the top of the roof. What's he doing there? It's a king. <laughs> Get the fresh air. The... <laughs> Praise the Lord. And David and, uh, and David sent and inquired. Okay. So, Saint Ju- I want to just read that part. Maybe that's going to be the only scripture I'm going to read before you. Um, and it came to pass in the evening that David arose from off his bed and walk upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof, he saw a woman because he was at the wrong place at the right time. I mean, wrong place at the wrong time, even. And it was there because he was at the wrong place. He now saw a woman. And David, and uh, the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent an inquire after the woman and one said, is not this Bath Sheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittite? And David sent messenger and took her, and she came into him, and he lay with her, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and, sent and told David and said, I am with child. And David sent to Joab, saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. You see, I will now find out that time is so precious even to the Israelites. Because at a particular point in time, when even David sent for Joab, I mean the Uriah, that is the wife of the lady that she, he slept with. The lady, I mean the man said, it is not right for them to leave the war front and come and enjoy the pleasure of life. See, that makes me to understand that time is so precious to them. But King didn't take cognizance of that. He sinned. So God, God will hold us accountable for our time. God will hold us accountable for our time. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. So the time you spend waiting a little longer can either be saved or or consenting you to do. How do you manage your time? That's for the, can God trust you with money? That's another thing. Can God trust you with money? Every one of us sometimes we think, I surrender. Oh, but when it comes to tithes, no, God, don't touch that area. Praise the Lord. During pandemic, nobody knows how the church is surviving. But there are some people that are dedicated to giving to the Lord. No, you can ask your question. You can ask yourself, if I were to be, if the way I'm contributing to this, I mean, to the advancement of church in this place, is the way other people are doing, would this church still remain like this? That's just the question. God will help us in the name of Jesus. Can God trust you with money? Most of the time, God bless me. God bless me. Somebody came to me when we were raising money for the church. He said. Pastor, ah, how I wish that you don't even announce this. I wish I could just give money to buy, the, to buy, to buy property for the church. I said, God will give you the, the enablement needed. But can God trust that particular person? That's the question. By the time the money comes now, what, what next? I don't have time. Pastor, you pray for us. Since your prayer that is God that says, sir. I'm in Paris. I can't come to church, you know. I have friends that I need to meet. Money has come. There are times that you, you will go on fasting, but money has come now. You have money to load the fridge and the cupboard. No time for fasting anymore. Praise the Lord. Can God trust you when, he gave, when, when that money comes to your hand? Some people, you don't notice the trace of uh, of pride in them until the money until money comes. When the, the money comes, now they talk with all, with arrogance. They look at people. They look at people, 
sometimes they look uh, down at people. Praise the Lord. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Can God trust you with money? You are busy praying. God bless me. I will, in fact, I will finance the widow. I will finance the offer. I will do this. I will do that. But if that little money comes to your hand, how will you handle it? That's what God is doing. So some people are not prosper at all, simply because God knows them. You, that God gave a 100 pounds job, and you cannot pay a tithe of 10 pounds, how will God commit or promote you to the level of any one, one million? Can God trust you? That's the question. So if God bless you with the money, I'm not saying it's bad to, to, be, to do business, but would that business allow you to serve God? That's just the question. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? Money are sucking many souls into perdition. And you want to agree with me that the greatest problem we have now is money. In the country that I came from now, 17 years old, 16 years old, they are, they are into ritual. All because they want money. How can 16 years or 17 years old, you know, handle the lady's uh, neck and just cut it like that just because they want money? God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. You can see all what people are doing in, just for, because of money. People are said desperate to make money. Herbalists are having more customers. Native daughters are enjoying boost of their consultancy services because they want money. In my family house, then we rented a place for a man, and the man was looking for money at all costs. And we just woke up one day, and people were shouting. They said, the, the man died. What happened? They gave him raw chicken to eat. <laughs> Devil is a liar. <laughs> he had a whole, raw, a whole raw chicken, only to realize that it was a fake babalao. <laughs> He ate raw chicken, and that was the end. The, the tummy starts swelling up until the man, you know, just died just like that. God will help us in Jesus' mighty name. This is just all in the name of money. Many people have forgotten God because they now have money. Righteousness is only important to them to receive financial breakthrough from God. It is when they don't have money that righteousness is very important. So by the time money comes, God just tried them with little money. You now see them having bar in their house with all these different kinds of uh, drinks that ordinarily when they were poor, they can't even afford. I'm not saying you should not have beer parlor in your house because they said that's what is in vogue now. But as a child of God, you know the, what it means. Why should you follow the pattern of the world? God just gave you little money, just have bar. That's the first thing you see in the morning with different kind of beer. And you want to ask, hey, but you don't, I mean, Chris, I don't drink, but I have business partners that visit me. And that's what I used to entertain them. That's the excuse some people normally give. God will help us. Can God trust you? So God trusts some money with money and they mess it up. Just like that. You can just you no. Know, you can you can quote me to say I said you not have beer in your house. I think it's safe for me not for you to say not to have it. And they have different kinds of beers. Uh, I mean, uh, they ask their guests, "What can, you want this?" They have the names. I don't know the names. Who can help me? <laughs> Sister Basic, are you asking with uh, part of expensive um, expensive wine? It has names. When I visited America, they were just made only different kind of names. They said this one is from Italy. Italy was made 1921. Ah. Praise the Lord. So that is what some Christians find themselves in by reason of what, how God blessed them. 
So they built what is called bar in their house. At the first look, bottles of beers, abominable drinks are stored there. Can God trust you with money? Can God trust you with money? Can God trust you? You know, pastor knows some people when they were poor. Knew them when they were poor. But by the time money comes now, the moment money comes, they shuffle their feet sluggishly to church services. You don't see them in church anymore. I told you the other time, a brother I was just calling, he said, ah, hey, Pastor, it's because of joy. You want me to pray to agree with you so that God can take that job from you. I ah, said, no, Pastor. See, the truth of the matter is some people worship money. But when they are trusting God and bombarding heaven with requests like that, you see them in church. They will do all kinds of things. And by the time God answers, let me just try this one with this job. And the money begins to flow in. You don't see them again. Bro, why is it that we don't see you? Eh, it's your, because your prayer has answered, sir. So is it a cry for pastor to pray for congregation to be blessed? Praise the Lord. But by the time God bless you, you will not use that, bless, uh, that blessing against God in the name of Jesus. That blessing will not take you to hell in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The full book, where First Timothy chapter 6, 17 to 19 says, Chide them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. God has blessed us to enjoy all things, but don't do it at the expense of God. Can God trust you with your talents? You can see that you're now coming up with his own special way of presenting news. Whether you like it or not, we are all gifted. But you cannot identify that gift until you make use of it. We don't need to struggle. I mean, we don't need to cajole you before you make use of that talent. In fact, if you discover that you don't even have, but you have face. I always say, these ladies, if you have face, just come, just smile. All you need to take is to smile. I was asking in those days when we normally have many students like that. Then my wife asked one. He said, what are you doing in the church? He said, he was just laughing. He said, what are you doing? You've been here for how many, for how many years? He said, Pastor, we are the one giving money in church. That's what we do. He said, he's giving money in church secretly. And the truth of the matter, in those days, we have many students. And the, the income of the church is so high. And the brother said, that's what we are doing. And at the point, some people say, Pastor, what we are doing is we are just praying for you. I don't even know that they are praying for me. I was about to tongue lash them. That you are, just, you are just sitting down for nothing, not doing anything. Whereas some people, they, that's why that you, you don't listen to, sometimes, as a pastor, because we don't see it all. So it is possible for us to begin to lambast you that you are useless in the church, not knowing that you are actually praying for us. So that, about two of them, they said, oh, we are doing, Pastor, we are just praying for you. Ah, I almost cry. And similarly, we have people like that. But what is your own talent? What are you doing? You know how to play keyboard. We have to beg and beg and beg you to come out. Some, we are, are gifted with, you know, um, with, the, with, with poem, how to write poem. But instead of you using your poem to glorify God, are you not using it to write love stories <laughs> that will send many young people to hell? Can God trust you? Say, I want to be like my father, uh, Solomon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Every talent shall be reckoned for on the last day. If you look, time will not permit me, but go and read the book of Matthew chapter 25, 14 to 30. He says, let me just read. He said, for the kingdom of heaven is as like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servant and deliver unto him his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. And straight away he took his journey. Then at a particular point in time, after the man came back, he was, making, he was asking them to give account of those talents. 
one took one, he buried it. Are you burying your talents? Whatever God has deposited in you, it is time for you to make use of it so that heaven will smile and give you word of commendation instead of word of condemnation. I pray for you that God Almighty will make, you will identify that gift that God has given you and you will use it to the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says, he that is faithful in one few things, he will give the person more, more. That person will be launched into the realm of abundance. So everyone, at, everyone has at least a talent from God. Whatever you do with your talent, we count on the brick of eternity. Can God trust you? Can God trust you? There are great writers who use power of pen. If you know how to write very well, come and see me in the office. There are so many letters to write. Some great, there are some people that have uncommon voices. When they sing among the choir, you can pick their voice. You are sitting, sitting there, not doing anything. But you observe and say, this one doesn't have voice. The voice is modulating. You keep condemning them, those that are using their gifts. God bless. God will bless you. And you will sing, even with the choir in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. So whatever gifts, I will mention that sister that sing here, whenever he's leading crosses, ah, it's like I'm in heaven. With that special voice, whether, it's, whether she notice or she doesn't notice, but I won't mention names. But the voice is so, so good, so good, so good. Do you know that voice sometimes peer through and it ministers to you? And it's like you are just God in the presence of God. I'm not talking about not speaking. With a certain voice. So whatever voice that God has given you, you don't even really know what God has given you. Maybe to save a soul. Somebody will just walk into the church and just say, that sister sang one day. And that led to my, I mean, that makes me to give my life to Jesus. So whatever God has given you, use. Some, are skif some have skillful hands in playing drum playing, you know, musical instrument. Why not join the choir? Thank God for Brother Benga that started beating that drum there. It has been there for how many years that we bought it? Some people will go there and they will disappear. But you will leave the minister, minister's seat and go and be playing drums there. And you are there, you can play it. God will hold you accountable for it. It is not a cause. So whatever you find in the house of the Lord, just get it done. And God will bless you in return in the mighty name of Jesus. Can God, can God trust you with property? Can God trust you with property? The Bible says, Psalm 24 verse 1, Psalm of David says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, including your property. The truth of the matter is you don't, the truth of the matter is that you don't really, you don't own anything. You are only like a kataka, a steward, and you are going to give account of it. So it is a shame that many Christians are not trustworthy. You are being, you are, God has enabled you to buy a house, but we have to conjure you to, for us to give, to just give us one hour in your house, as house fellowship. You don't find it need for us to just say, Pastor, my house is available. What you are concerned is how we are going to mess up your, your carpets. Or how we are going to mess up your whole house with noise, or disturb you with noise. Neighbor must not know that I have, I'm a Christian. I don't want people to come. Can God trust you if God has given you that property? It is only what God use. It is only what God use that will last. So many people are becoming so wise now to the extent that they cannot even give to God. So if God, you are uh, bombarding heaven, God, give me a mortgage, give me a house. But when the house comes now, we are looking for house fellowship. Is your house available? No. I think the people are saying that you get off the pulpit. Can God trust you? Okay, let me just hand there. Can God trust you as a leader? Can God trust you as a leader? Are you not abusing that position of authority? It is a privilege for us to become a, to be a leader. It is a privilege. And indeed, it's another gift entirely. How do you manage it? Can, you, can God trust you to manage 
or to be in a particular position. That's just another thing. Can God trust you? Can God trust you to do that? So God did not promote some people because he knew that when he promoted them, they will use the power wrongly. God doesn't answer some prayers for some people to have anointing. Because they use the anointing, they're going to use it to kill. They will kill many people. God cannot trust some people in the times of revelation. Because if God reveals something to you, you begin to tell it to the whole world. God cannot trust some people because they're talkative. They are just talkative. They can talk from now to the end. God cannot commit himself onto that vessel. I don't want you to look into your life. Now, before you begin to make requests for God, some God trusts them with children. And the excuses they have, why are you late to church? It's because of your children. Not my, it's not their children now. It is pastor's child, children. Pastor, you know these children? They are your, these are your children. They, they always make me late. So as if God has done something bad to this, I mean to give you children. So don't use your children to give your excuse in the church. Better say the truth. God will have mercy upon us in Jesus' mighty name. If God, whatever God has given you, there's always a day of reckoning. Like that, that master that requested for accountability. You are going to give account of your time. You are going to give account of what God has blessed you with. Your talent, you are going to give account of it. Even your leadership position, you are going to give account of it. I'm going to give account on everyone here. That is why you don't struggle to become a pastor because it's a heavy load. I cannot even account for my family. The less of accounting for every individual. I, find, I consider it to be a great, you know, great burden. And indeed because I'm going to stand to give account about Sister Agatha, about, uh, you know, uh, Sister Dimbia, everything. How I've been able to manage them to eventually make them to go to heaven. You will go he to heaven in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You will go to heaven. And even as a leader, I pray that I will not be cast away as well. Amen in the course of you know leading people so every one of us you have a responsibility you are accountable to god a day will come when you are going to give account of it so the truth of the matter is ask that question in within you can god trust me can god trust me so before you begin to ask god god give me this god give me that all what god is saying can i trust you can i trust you can i trust you to work with a millionaire can I trust you to work with me now that I will not begin to siphon the money in your pocket? If I promote you to that level, I want to become peer of that governor. God is just looking at you. You will disappoint me. Shall we just bow down our head and just pray? Let's talk to God, that Lord God Almighty. This morning, Lord Almighty, I open up to you. I want to register my weakness in certain area. I don't know that area that you want to register your weakness, that God just have mercy upon me in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that Lord, visit me today. Lord, the area at which I have not given or surrendered all unto you, Father, have your way in my life in the name of Jesus. Cause my will to be aligned with that of yours in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, those things that I'm doing in the secret that is not open to people, Lord Almighty, I pray this morning, just have mercy upon me in the name of Jesus and deliver me from secret sin in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So if you don't have any relationship with God, God is not trusting you at all in that regard. But coming to the Lord, he will, put, he will repose you know, trust in you and he will consider you to be his children. And one of his children, may God bless us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Shall we just take our offering briefly so that we have time to go and um, enjoy with uh, Sister Dimbia? So, as we are going to that place, can God trust you that you will not lose your salvation because of food? <laughs> so, you find yourself there. Don't say that lady always have me small food, small meat every time. I've noticed her. Today's the day. And shall come to that small meat. <laughs> Praise God. One. Can we rise up to give our offering quickly?